Hi everybody, welcome back to the Atari 8-Bit series. Today we're going to be working on the Atari 410 program recorder. This is a cassette player that allows you to record programs to and read from and play games and everything from this. I previously tested this when I first got the Atari 800 and I do know that the issue with it is that the play goes very very slow, fast forward, doesn't move at all, rewind, jerks around but doesn't go anywhere. And then I opened it up and I plugged it in and looked at it again and all the belts are loose. So we know it just needs new belts. So I haven't gone any farther than that other than to order, which is still available, a belt kit for this from console 5. And I'll put the link in the description. So it's got the four belts that are using here. So what we're going to do is going to replace the belts today. To get started on this here, we need to remove the four bottom screws. Now I'm working with a new camera setup today, so if I seem a little awkward, it's because I actually now have three dedicated cameras. I'm not using a webcam coming off of a computer. So first thing I'm going to do is find my screwdriver. My Phillips screwdriver is missing from my stack. Can I use this one? Oh, I can use this one. Okay, I'll use this one. And go ahead and remove it from this one. I can figure out where to put my Phillips screwdriver at. So there's four screws that hold this in place. Turn over and let the screws fall out. Two came loose. Another one. One more screw. Come on, the last screw. We probably it needs a little tenth of a turn to get the rest of it down. There. Why are you doing that? It's obviously, it's loose. All right. We we'll have to just stuck in here. Push it. There we go. So those four screws out of the way. Then when you open it up, you see it, le it levers out like this. I want to pop this out just to make it easier to move things. And then you got a little clip here. Do that. Now it's a little easier to move things around. Now to remove the belts, we're going to have to bare minimum remove this circuit board to get down to at least this belt, if not the rest of them. There are four belts in here. I'm assuming one is a dry belt. One's going to be for the index counter, and the other two might be fast forward and, re and rewind. We shall find out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove the circuit board here. And actually, let me turn on my other camera here. This is the other camera I got set up also for doing close-ups. We'll see how this works out. Just on the off chance I want to show you something close-up, I can do it with that camera. So it looks like four screws. All right, those four out of the way. It's going to keep them separate. Those are for the printed circuit board screws. Okay, yes, this does just lift right up off of it. We got wires. that are in the way of coming up any further. Let's see, is there any way I can do this to make it easier to move things around? Let's take this over here. It looks like I'm gonna have to have that in the way, but I can get it, there we get that up there. Okay, now we have the main one there, we see that. I see this little one over here, that's gonna be easy, so that's gonna be that. Let's go ahead and Actually, let's do that one first. Because I'll, I'll do them by size. So this one is easy. You're just going to pop it off. Look at this side. Let me open this up here. But look at the size difference and thickness. 
Was the original one really that thin, or is these things just disintegrated over time? You see how that one is right there? And this replacement one, it's the same size. Maybe they just have bigger ones that console five has. I'm probably doing this the hard way. I should do the big axle first. Oh, I see it. I see another one down in there. So I may end up having to take this off completely anyways. Let's get that one in there. Okay, that one's in place. So you got this down here. Okay, I'm trying to make it so that it's easy to see and it's not in the way of me either working on it. Okay, that will work better right there. Just take that. that yeah, there. Now I'm off the, out of the way. And make sure we're visible on all three cameras here. Okay, now the next one I want to do is I want to do that, but I'm pretty sure I probably should want to move, remove the mechanism itself. Let's take a look at that. Looks like we got one screw here, one here, one here, and I don't know if that's going to hold it in place or if there's anything holding this side. It might be these over here. So let's let's try that. Let's go ahead and remove those. What if the motor comes up with it? Okay, so yes, this one right here is also holding in place. I may have jumped the gun putting that one on there because it's coming out anyways for me to do the other screws. Now, what is there any other screws that are holding in place? Seems like there should be something over here. These? Oh, yeah, that's them right there. These unscrew too. I get it. I see. What I'm doing off the camera here is I'm organizing the screws in little piles of where, when I took them off. Okay, I'm probably going to be switching batteries on the close-up camera soon. We'll see. Come on. I hope you're not held like held in there with a nut. That one doesn't want to come out easy. It, yeah, it's got to be a nut holding that one. Okay. So that comes up like that, and yep, it does have a nut. Okay, so we got these out of the way. Let's move that, at least this over there out of the way. Now we can get to things in here. Ah, here we go. Now we can start looking at what goes where. We have this belt here, and you saw how loose that was. That's just flopping around in there. I'm going to assume that that is the second largest belt. We'll just see. Yeah, that's that one. So that one comes over here. Turn it until the belt goes. Make sure the belt doesn't have any twists in it. Okay, that one's there, okay. I see another one down inside here further. I hope I can get that to the other side. It's down in here. So let's remove this one here so I can put the floor, that one on there. Can I do this with a smaller screwdriver? That one won't fit it. I don't think the electric screwdriver is going to. Yeah, I got to find my other screwdriver here. Okay, I changed the battery and I got out my smaller tool kit so 
I can get to these smaller screws. Come on. Oh, I was doing it wrong. Put that over here, and now I should be able to get these screws out here. Hopefully it's not springs in here that's going to go pop and go flying. See what I'm doing is removing these two screws here. Alright, so that's good right there. That's right there. Get that one off. That one's really stretched out pretty good, but it's going to use that bigger one here. But I got one more down here I got to get to. It's on the other side of this. Do I have to do, I do it from that side or from. See, it's right here. Where's it go? It goes to on here. So I. Okay, what it looks like is I can leaf it. I can. Get it to go on there. I take this here, work it, take it out here, and go around the outside of it. It it will work. It does look like it. It's going to. It's just I got to make sure I don't go back on it as I'm going around it. Okay, that's off of there. And then what I need to do is work it off down here. Where is it going down here now? Oh, it's right on the other side of this. So this right here is the mechanism that, no, no, yeah, I think I can do it that way. I think I can push this down here and I can get it out this way here. Yeah, see how that goes? That goes down there, and that lets me free it out. All right. This printed circuit board and the extra wire is a pain in the neck, but as you can see, right down here by my thumb is. See, this is where I'm working it out. I got to work it so I can pull it over the top of it. Not that one. I want. Okay. I gotta level my table because things like to roll off of it. If I don't watch, both screwdrivers just roll off of it. So what I gotta do is I gotta take this here and get it out like such. So that I can pull it out. I got that far, but that's going the wrong direction. I go over the other way, but it is off. So now to figure out how to get it off on this side here. Maybe I can remove that. Get over there. Hey. I didn't realize that just popped out of the way. That doesn't help me, but that was cool that it popped out of the way. Oh, it does move. Okay, that works. Okay. 
get it up like that, then I can just take it out that way. Trying to make it go under. There we go. Got it out. Now this one has to go under there. Like I did the other one. Right now, push this back down in here. Okay. Now flip it back over here on this side. You can see, yeah, this is, I gotta watch out. I'm, I'm starting to twist things up, so I'll make sure I untwist everything first. You get out of the way. All right, you can see I got the, I got it down here. See it down here? So I gotta get it up here. Take it back out around this one. And I gotta look on the other side too, make sure I'm let me check the other side first. Make sure, yeah, okay. I am not perfectly in there yet. Most definitely have to level this table. Everything's just rolling away. Okay, this around there. Get this around the outside of the thing. Okay, now that's pretty much on there. And then put it around that one. So now it's on both sides. Well, it's on that side. Now, we'll just turn it. Come on. Go this way there. Okay, maybe we won't go this way. Maybe this way is easier for you to go. Whatever way is easier for you to get to go in place. All right. Wiggled it in there, and it's still on that one. Let me just turn this just to see. And you see right there, it's spinning that one nicely. So that one's good, that one's good. Now, the last one I'll put back on is the main belt. So let's untangle our twisted up mess here again. This came out of here. Okay. Then we take our main belt, right here, put it on here, and down there, twist it a couple times, try to, try to get the kinks out of it. I'm introducing more kinks than getting them out. Not kinks, twists I should say. There we go. All right, so all the belts are on it now. We have the belt going to the index wheel. We have the belt going to the, well this is the, in, this I guess it's a reducer. It goes from this one, reduces for the index wheel. We have this one, which connects directly on to the um, fast forward over the play or whatever one it is. And we have the one down inside here, which goes the other way. And yeah, okay. So now we can reassemble it, if we can remember how we did it. I'll remember it. First, let's untangle this mess we just made again. Let's get it oh, to this piece here, so we can reattach things. Make sure I don't have any wires trapped anywhere. Now we'll put in the standoffs. And then start replacing the screws.
okay. Now the circuit board, this is twisted under, let's get this thing untangled. So it's at underneath there. The circuit board goes up here, like so. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot something here. It would not be very good to leave that off. What I'm doing right now is I'm just checking to see if there's anything that to touch, but there's nothing that to touch there. This must have been a little out of place, but now it's in place. Just checking right now. I'm just looking to make sure there's nothing like hung up. None of the... Okay. I just want to make sure all the buttons are working. Nothing's hung up there, so we look good. Now I'll put this back on. Call the one with the washer went over here because the hole's bigger. And as I said in other videos, when you hear the electric screwdriver start skipping, that's not because I'm trying to torque it in. I am barely, I'm ho actually holding the screwdriver out of the hole, out of the screw head, so that it'll slip like that, so I'm not over tightening it. Because if I was over tightening it, you'd see the actual program recorder would move around as I'm tightening it. There we go. That's all assembled. Now this right here comes up and goes out the hole there. And then all of these wires here were just held in place by this, I guess so they don't flop around inside the case. Then put the base back on top. Get this one out of the way here. All right, now we'll put this back on here. And the four bottom screws. So now what I'll do is I'll take this, I'll turn off the cameras, I'll take the camera out to the Atari station, and we'll give this a test. i got to find a cassette, too. All right, so we're at the 800 table now. I plugged the 410 in. I did a preliminary test just to make sure everything is running, and the rewind is still going slow, so I'm going to have to open it up and have it run, uh, opened up while I play it just to see what might be binding up in there. It might need to be lubed. It might have something catching in there, but the rewind is like doing this. So I have to flip it over and fast forward. For, but so now we're going to give this a test here. And I'm going to save a program to, to BASIC. So I, I, I started up in BASIC. I'm just going to do a quick hello world. All right. And now when I, the way I'm going to save it. Now, I know you can just use save and load. But when I used the 800 or the 600 XL, it had the buggy version B basic in it. So you had to use list and enter because save added extra data to your to your program and you destroyed it. So I'm going to use the same concept I did then. So what do you do is you list it, list the program, but I'm going to list it to drive C, hello.bas. I don't think I need the file name, but that's the way I always did it before. 
So I'm going to do that. Then when you hit return, it gives you two beeps. That's telling you to push the play and the record and then hit any key. And now it's going to do a long leader tone. And that will also get me past the tape leader. And while that's doing that, I've got a couple other tapes. I've got an Atari version of Scram on tape. And this is Preppy 2, and I do believe it's for the Atari. We'll find out. So you hear right in the data, now it's done. Now normally I would rewind, but since the rewind is not working very well, it goes and stops and starts. As you can see, there's something binding up in there on the rewind. I'm just going to flip it over and just fast forward it to get to the end. Before I fixed anything, the play was barely moving, the fast forward and the rewind were barely moving, so we're in better condition than we were before. So I flipped it back over, and now I'm going to clear this. You can see there's nothing in memory. And now to load it, I'm going to do enter, and I'm going to get rid of the caps lock, enter, enter. What did I do? Oh, okay. My bad. Enter C colon hello dot BAS. Hit return. You hear one note that tells you to push the play. Then push that and then it will play it. And as it finds this data, I'm just looking to see it. When it finds the data, it will start making noise. You'll hear the data being loaded. It doesn't, you don't hear the, the, lead, the tone, you just hear the data. So it's done, stops the recorder, and if I list it, you'll see it's there. Now you can also use run, I believe, let me just, let me try that again. I'm going to fast forward to rewind. I'm going to do, I think I can use run on a, let's see, can I use one on a listed program? Try this again. Let's see, can I use run on it? Or can I only use run on a program that's been saved? We'll find out. I think I could do a run on a listed program also. Nope, I guess you can't. So, I can't do it that way. I can't run a listed program. Alrighty, there's something new. Now what I'm going to try is, I'm going to try one of these Atari, this Atari cartridge of Scram. It takes five minutes to load. A 16K version and 24K version. Fascinating thing, the 16K or the 24K version takes 5 minutes 13 seconds to load. The 16K version takes 6 minutes 15 seconds to load. Why? I don't know. Let's put in the 16 or let's put in the I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna put in the the six uh, I'm gonna fast forward this one and put in the 24K version on the other side. This one, I don't know if it's an Atari game or not. I know Preppy 2 was a game back then. I don't know if it was Atari or if it's a Commodore or something else. So we're going to find out. I won't make you suffer through hearing this. I'm going to fast forward through this once I get it set up. Okay, I put the 24K version in on this side. And now, do I just run it? Or do I load then run? Or do I B run? Hmm, we shall find out. If I hold the option key down, does this thing tell me to. Nope, okay. Does any of these keys tell me to. 
I'm wondering if any of these keys tell me to start the tape deck. There it is. That's the one I'm looking for. Holding the start down when I start it. And that should be how you load this. That way you don't have to worry about a run or anything. It shouldn't be a basic program. It should be just a straight uh, machine language program. We shall see. Eventually we'll hear some noise. Once the noise starts, then I'll start fast forwarding it. The video, not the game. Well, it stopped making noise. I don't know what it's doing now. You'd think I'd get an error. Makes me wonder, maybe this doesn't have the original game on it anymore. Let's fast forward and try the other side. It's quite possible it doesn't have the original game on it that somebody recorded over it. Because that sounded like it was a real short program. Burr, 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 done. Though it does have the right protect tabs punched out. But let's try this side. That sounds different. Is that actually the right sound for it? I do know the Atari allows you to play music through it. Because I used to do that when I had my 600 XL and the 1010 recorder. I would put a cassette tape in with music and then I'd poke a place in memory. Alright, so that isn't working. Who dare? We got closer. So this must be just a bad tape. But I would play music and I'd poke a certain location in memory and it would turn on the motor for the cassette deck. And I'd just listen to music going through the speaker. That's kind of cool. Let's see what this preppy has on it. Again, I'm going to assume that these are not basic programs. So I'm going to start them this way and just see what's on there. If there's anything that works on this system. If not, then we'll just call it good that we do know it works. And we're not too concerned about these tapes. Nothing so far. Maybe it's a blank. Oh, there we go. That does sound like the right kind of data. Maybe this one's a good one. We'll let it run and see. I'll fast forward through this. Oh, didn't need to fast forward. Oh, got to remove the cartridge. Well, isn't that nice of them to tell you where it's at? Now, I wonder if the other one had the same issue. If um, Scram needed the cartridge removed. Well, it says basic cartridge required, so I guess not. Was it a basic program? Hmm. Okay. Anyways, let's remove the basic cartridge. All right, we'll get this one set to go. Hold down the start button, turn it on. Just play. And now we're loading it. Alright, so it's just about done. Let's see if it does anything once it loads those records. Oh, it plays music. One stick, one player, start, begin game. So it's Preppy 2 by Russ Wetmore for Star System Software Incorporated. 1983 Star System Software, 1983 Adventure International, Longwood, Florida. I don't know why I kept going back, unless it was picking it up twice. Oh, okay, it's 
flashlight. I need to get a better joystick. So I gotta fill these in while the frogs are chasing me. Can I shoot them or anything? Oh, I guess not that way. Do I have any shooting or anything like that? Isn't that cute? kind of cool. What is this ever made for the ColecoVision? Because this is an interesting little game here. If I had a better joystick than it is. So that was the Atari 410 program recorder. Sorry for the slightly abrupt ending there. I got involved playing Preppy and didn't realize that the SD card was full on my camera. And I just kept playing away. Up next in the Atari 8-bit series, I have one piece of equipment left that I want to play with or try to play with. That's the, the modem. And then I want to start going through all those diskettes that I have. I've been working in the background setting up the process of actually copying over making the images so stay tuned be sure to like and subscribe leave some comments down below I don't care good bad or indifferent have a great day